right, gentlemen and ladies. Don't forget to close that. You should always check your zippers. It's windy out here today. It's been a little while since I've been on dirt, or it feels like it anyway. Whoa! Whoa! That wind is really strong, and this sail isn't really helping. Well, let's see what's going on today. <laughs> I'm camping. It's been a while since I've done this. I haven't gone out at all really this winter, and I, I meant to go out a lot, but just other stuff came up that was more important, and I just didn't go out. So anyway, it's been a while, and it feels weird. And I'm, I've been thinking about that because, like, I just made a video talking about how when I go camping alone, it, like, makes me feel stronger. It gives me more confidence just in life in general. I feel more self-reliant, feel more confident dealing with everyday people. But what I forgot to mention in that video is basically every time I prepare to go out and motorcycle camp, I, I get nervous before I go. Like, I have no real reason to feel nervous. I know what I'm doing. I know how to ride a motorcycle. I know how to pack. I know what I need. Like, I have no reason to feel uh, unconfident, you know? Yeah, for some reason I get, like, anxiety prior to going. So, like, on the mornings of a day where I'm going to go out, I always, like, I get uncomfortable. I'm going to let this guy around me. But I get uncomfortable and it's just, like, I don't know. It's, like, fear of, of unknown results, you know? You don't know what you're going to find when you come out here. You don't know if today is the day where you mess up. You don't know if today is the day you realize you're not as good at riding a motorcycle as you thought. Uh, and it usually goes away. The feelings usually go away as soon as I get on the dirt, honestly, which is kind of weird, but it's like, I don't know if it just distracts me from thinking about it or if I'm like, okay, now I'm in it. Like, we're doing it now. Like, instead of anticipating the trip, I'm actually on the trip and it, I guess, makes me feel better. I don't know. I really don't know. But yeah, so I mean that leads me into the other thing I'm going to kind of talk about, which is that somebody asked me one time, like if I have a plan for a breakdown, like if, do I know what I'm going to do? Am I prepared for a breakdown? And I'm not really sure how to answer that. Like I, I guess I'm prepared, but I mean how prepared can you be when you're out of cell signal and you're by yourself? Like you can only be so prepared. This thing is coming. You know, so I mean, to, to answer that question, it's like, well, I take the best care of my motorcycle that I can do within my knowledge of taking care of motorcycles. Like, the oil is changed on a regular basis, religiously. The chain is checked and, and, and cleaned uh, at least every other time I ride. Every single time I ride, I look at the chain. I make sure nothing's weird, nothing's, like, I make sure it's not getting slacked. I make sure the sprocket, the rear sprocket anyway, I make sure that looks like it's wearing okay. When I start the bike, I make sure it's idling okay. I make sure there's no leaks ever, ever. If there's a leak on this bike, I will not ride it. And it's not happened yet, but I make sure there's, pretty much everything is in order. And that's probably the thing that's most important because if you're gonna have a breakdown, you have to have overlooked something. I mean, I'm probably jinx jinxing myself, but if you don't overlook anything and you make sure your maintenance is up to date and all of your repairs have been done and your tires are in good condition and all of that uh, your bigger concern is going to be your environment and yourself i think the motorcycle will take care of itself but i don't have a satellite phone i need a satellite phone or some way to contact somebody if something does happen and i need to contact help and i don't have a way to change my tires some people carry like a patch kit to patch tubes. Some people carry spare tubes. And I don't carry any of it because I can't, I have not successfully changed a tire on this bike before. <laughs> so carrying those things is kind of, I just feel like it's maybe more of a hassle right now. Like I need to like, these tires are on their last leg and as soon as they're, I feel like they're actually worn out enough to take off, I will be changing them in my garage. I have a brand new set of tires to put on and I'll be going over it and I'll teach myself how to do it for real. Um, but since I can't confidently do it, my plan is like if I had a flat that was really debilitating, like I, I couldn't ride on it at all. Well, assuming like instead of a slow leak or something, you have an actual flat. Uh, my my uh, plan is to 
just go for a walk and try to find somebody because a lot of these areas I camp in like I'll camp off of this road today and there'll probably be a few people on this road today riding ATVs or dirt bikes or whatever and so if I had a situation out here I would probably just try to find someone and see if uh, either they could take me to a place that has cell service or if they're up for it if they have a trailer they can come and get me a bike you know like I think people out here are probably really willing to help each other on the trail because it just gives them more action you know it gives them something to do other than ride anyway but if I can't find anybody I will just have to go for a long walk back to a paved road where I can find somebody and I hike a lot or I try to hike a lot so I, th I know that I have it in me to walk like 10 miles if I had to and I'm, I'm rarely I'm rarely 10 miles from a paved road the plan is really to walk and find help or walk until I can get cell service but mainly I just try to take care of it and make sure the bike looks like it's in good enough shape to be out here and make sure the tires are in good enough condition I did not check the air pressures today uh, which is dumb I was being lazy I was kind of in a hurry because I thought I was behind schedule but I got out here a little quicker than I anticipated so yeah that's that that's how I would handle that situation obviously if you're riding with a partner you'll have twice the brain power and twice the manpower and if you do have to change a tire you'll have someone to help you make sure my tools are still here people have told me about rock straps many times and no I haven't bought them yet because the bungees that I use do a perfect job like they're fine I haven't had a situation where I wish those bungees were tighter they're really just there to kind of help hold everything on a little more snugly but if I ever lose one I'll, I'll replace them with rock straps anyway yeah so I think I gained a bunch of new subscribers when I uploaded that video about camping alone so that's cool if you're one of those new subscribers you should know that I uh, I don't go camping as often as I should go camping but I do the best that I can they generally occur in the winter and spring because that's Arizona's season for that sort of shit the summer's really hot so if I camp during the summer I have to I have to go kind of far away hmm home sweet home baby it's all mine Well, today I'm actually going to cook food in a fire instead of in a pot. But that's going to require me to build a fire pit right here because currently one does not exist. Pretty good looking fire pit, I'd say. Well, I think I'm just gonna lay down and read a book, honestly, because it's three o'clock. I'm not gonna start a fire yet. But uh, when I do, I'll turn this thing back on. So a while back, I made a video about um, processed foods. Spent the whole whole video complaining about that stuff and talking about how bad it is for you and not a single person brought up the fact that when I'm camping I'm always eating processed foods <laughs> obviously I do that because it's easy and if you're camping you need food that's quick and easy but one of the things I want to do and I've been thinking about for a while I just haven't actually done it because I haven't had a place where I've planned on making a fire is uh like to take actual fresh food that I bought from a store, bring it out here and actually make something out of it. And to do it in a way that's like feasible if you're actually traveling on a motorcycle. And so today I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna cook a hobo dinner. 
I just I bought some vegetables. I got carrots, a potato, um, green onions, and mushrooms, and I'm gonna cook them in aluminum foil, just wrapped up, put it in a fire, just let it go, and it's cold hobo style. Pretty easy way to cook food, um, but the, the point that I'm hoping to make is that producing something using actual produce isn't as hard as we all act like it is, um, even if you're out here. One of the things that struck me as soon as I was checking out at the grocery store is actually how cheap it is to buy real vegetables. I think I paid like 20 cents for two carrots, 10 cents for green onions. Potato, I think, was a dollar. And uh, these mushrooms, they might have been $3. I took half the package and left it at home because there's a lot of mushrooms. So if you're on the road and you're riding and you think you're going to make some food with the mushrooms. You gotta find a way to store it. That's better than this. I did not bring any kind of a cutting board, but I think I can improvise using like a lid or something for this pot, maybe. You can get like little mini cutting boards, but all the ones I saw at Walmart were like in multi-packs and I didn't want to buy five cutting boards. I just wanted the one. I'm going to try to cut it as thin as I can. I brought the pot because tomorrow morning I might eat an MRE for breakfast. And if I do, I want to boil it in water. I usually try not to bring that pot if I can help it. Normally with these little hobo dinner camping things you add beef or something. Um, I didn't buy any beef because I didn't want to bring it out here and have to worry about it. <laughs> like, I just feel like transporting that, worrying about the juices getting in my bags and staying in my bags and, I don't know, making animals curious would be something I wanted to avoid. So, and that's generally what I do <laughs> when I'm camping. I don't think I've ever brought meat unless I'm camp car camping and I have a cooler. Lastly, I have foil, which was $2, and I bought a nice foil. Because I don't want to deal with this falling apart. I might have too much here. I've never done this. But the idea is that you wrap all of this up, and then you can just plop the whole thing down on the fire. Leave it there for a while. That's salt, pepper, and onion powder. It's very simple. I can't tell you how good this is gonna be because I'm winging it. But salt and pepper uh, goes a long way. And now, uh, we have to make a fire. the part that I've been looking forward to all day. Last time I went out I actually spilled the rest of my Jim Beam and I was upset. <sighs> yep, that's alcohol. So this might be, might be about time. Alright. It's going to spill out if I leave it on any longer. The fire's burning holes in the foil, which is fine. It's probably on too much heat, but hey, take what you can get. It's 5.39, and we should go find something to shoot. If you don't know, 
The wash is an area that's kind of like a dry river bed. So it's all sandy and shit. They cross through areas like, uh, like rivers would, but instead of having a river there, you just have this. People like to go off-roading and stuff in them, and I think it's a great place to shoot guns. So maybe I'll shoot there and I'll stand there. How about that? Put these sticks in the ground and we'll shoot at these. There's target A. This is target B. Target B should blow up if I shoot it. It's good enough. Let's put the old earplugs in. Whew, I can barely see them from here. Got target C once. <laughs> so uh, last time I did pretty good and this time I'm not doing very good. I'm trying to shoot at that stick on the left. That was a bad shot, I could feel my gun twitch. All right, I'm gonna hit it no matter what, so let's just get closer. Actually brought two this time. Dude, am I hitting it? skimmed it once right here. That one died really quick. I swear to God, my bullets are going through this. Look at that, it's been split. One, two, that's a, that's a graze. Three, four, five. This has been hit. It's just a shitty stick. That's it. That's all she wrote. Although that one was deceiving me. That one exploded as expected. All right, let's go eat some dinner. It definitely needs more salt and pepper. Oh, it's nice, it just split apart like that. Do you see that? That's kind of what you want. <laughs> so, the stuff on the bottom is clearly burned, and I think that's to be expected because I wasn't flipping it um, because my situation didn't really allow for that. But overall, I think this looks pretty good. I mean, simplicity isn't here because like I had to process the vegetables, I had to cut them up, you know, whatever. And I had to buy the foil, but it wasn't hard to add to my kit. It's actually delicious. Like, maybe you think you gotta season stuff just perfect, and it's gotta be delicious, and it's gotta be everything you thought it would be. But I think if you're out here where I am, and you rode a motorcycle to this location, and you're camping here, and you have fresh produce that you're eating that you just cooked on a fire, you're in good shape. But if you're on the road, and you're living off your bike, you could pretty easily do this for not a lot of money. <laughs>